Hey everybody, it's Joe from greenlightsound.com and today we're going to take a look at some mixing tips for beginners. And in fact, my top 10 mixing tips for beginners that are going to save you a ton of time. They're going to help with your workflow and really get you on the right path to getting great mixes. So let's jump right in with tip number one, which is to gain stage first. Now, gain staging tends to be a little bit of a complicated discussion with some people, but it's really, really simple when you think about it. You're going to bring your raw tracks in and you're simply going to adjust them so that we have plenty of headroom for our mix. The most common reference point we're going to go for is an average level around negative 18 dBFS. Now we're talking RMS or average level there, not peaks. For peaky sources like percussion, you want to have those peaks be about negative 6 dBFS. And if we look at our meter, for example, on this kick drum, and I play the kick drum part. That little white line in Studio One represents average level. The blue line is your peak level. That doesn't really need much done to it. But if I needed to adjust, I could simply adjust my input controls here in Studio One, or if you got a trim plugin or something like that, to get your negative 18 dB FS average level or your negative six peaks. Tip number two in our top 10 mixing tips for beginners is to focus on fader balance. Spend lots and lots of time on your rough mix. Almost all other tools you use, plugin wise, EQ, compression, etc., are going to address problems that affect fader balance or that fader balance can't fix. So spend a lot of time really dialing in with your faders that rough mix after you gain stage. Tip number three is check the phase on multi mic recordings. Flip them, nudge them, or use a correction tool like Auto Align. What I mean by multi mic recording is something where the same source is recorded with multiple microphones. The drum set is a really perfect example. You've got a kick drum mic, you've got a snare drum mic, you've got sometimes a, a hi hat mic, a tom mic, uh, overheads, and they're all really capturing bits of the same source. And you want to make sure they line up for timing and phase. If you were to zoom in on the waveform really closely, you can see that these two things are really well in phase. But if they weren't, for example, if this was on the positive part of the cycle and this was the negative, they'd have some phase cancellation. It could be as simple as changing the polarity with a polarity button, or like I said, you can nudge a little bit on each track, or you could even use a tool like Auto Align or Melda Productions M Auto Align to get yourself all lined up. And what that really does in effect is bring back a lot more body to the recordings, especially low end body, because comb filtering will affect the low end frequencies most obviously first. Tip number four is going to be to high pass almost everything, maybe with the exception of kick and bass, but even those sometimes. There is so much junk in the low end of recordings that if we leave it all in there, it will build up subtly and ruin a mix. So I'm going to play a hi hat, for example, right here. I'll crank it up so we can really hear it. I'll open up this EQ. So this hi-hat already has some processing on it. I'm gonna bypass most of the processing we have going on in this hi-hat, especially the low cut. Now, if I really boost this low end, you're gonna hear all the junk that's down there. Now, boosting it obviously brings out stuff that you're not really going to hear if you don't boost, but cutting it out makes such a big difference. Here it is without the cut and with. We have the parts of the hi-hat we need, but not all that extra junk down there. And I would encourage you to try that on pretty much every track. We can really dial it in. The way you would do it is roll this cut frequency up until it gets to the point where it seems like a little too much and pull it back maybe 10 or 15%. And that's really going to get you enough of that low junk cut out but not get into the core of the sound. So high pass nearly everything. Top mixing tip for beginners number five is going to be to not over complicate EQ. Basically EQ comes down to two things. Cut out the bad stuff, boost the good stuff. It's really that simple. If we go back to our last tip, we're cutting out that low end information. If I jump back to my hi-hat processing that I have here, what did I do here? I didn't go crazy. It doesn't look like a giant spaghetti noodle all up and down. What I did was cut out that mid-range junk and boost the high end. Cut out the bottom end. It's really that simple. 
on a guitar part, you might want to boost up a little bit of the B for those low mids, scoop out some of that junk around five to 800 hertz, and then maybe a little bite around 2K or so. It's really cut the stuff that sounds bad, boost the stuff that sounds good. It is also really good when you're first cutting and boosting to do kind of subtle moves. Don't be really extreme with the EQ at first. Now, eventually you can. Lots of mixers go way extreme on the EQ. But when you're first learning, subtle boosts, subtle cuts, generally narrower for the cuts and wider for the boosts, and it's going to get you in the right ballpark in terms of EQ. Beginner mix tip number six is going to be to mix through your stereo bus effects, whatever that may be. Some slight EQ, some mixed bus compression, some widening, whatever you're going to use, if you use anything, mix through it from the beginning. Don't try to slap it on at the end. The easiest way to ruin a great balance and a great mix that you have is by throwing a bunch of effects on the master channel or the sub mix or the stereo bus or whatever you want to call it after you've done all that work. Mix through it to begin with. So if you're using something for tone, if you're using some bus compression, I use the Brainworks BX Townhouse SSL style compressor a lot. If you're doing a little bit of subtle widening, if you've got a little bit of EQ, I've got a pull tech here with a little bit of a boost on the low and highs, tape emulation, whatever, mix through that from the beginning. I also encourage you to try some of this stuff if you're not already, some subtle EQ, some mix bus compression, some tape saturation. It really does help glue everything together on your mix. Beginner mix tip number seven is going to be to stack multiple compressors rather than overworking a single compressor, what we would call serial compression. You'll get much more transparent results that way, and you can work to the strengths of the different compressors you are trying to use or the way you set them up if you're using a stock compressor. So instead of slamming your vocal with one compressor and really getting a lot of gain reduction, instead try to have two different compressors or two different compression instances of plugins and get different effects that way. So for example, a classic combination for vocals is going to be an 1176 followed by an LA-2A. Here I've got the UA version of the 1176, the Waves CLA-2A. The 1176 is gonna grab those peaks. It's a very fast acting compressor, knock down those little jumpy peaks that are happening. And then the LA-2A is a little bit slower. Tube compressor is gonna really smooth everything out. And if you go for less gain reduction on each of these compressors, rather than a ton on one of the compressors, you're gonna get a totally different effect that's much more smooth. So for example, if we're getting 10 dB, let's say, of overall gain reduction on the 1176. That will sound different than 5 dB on the 1176 and 5 dB on the CLA-2A, even though in effect we're achieving the same gain reduction or compression amount. So I really encourage you, try out stacking different compressors with different attack and release times. First one usually a little bit faster attack, second one a little bit slower. That helps smooth things out with that serial compression. Beginner mix tip number eight is to not use too much reverb use some other tools to add depth, particularly on vocals, but really any instrument. If you put a ton of reverb on something, that'll fit with certain styles, but a lot of times it'll just totally wash out the mix or your, your vocal will sound lost in the mix. We can create a sense of space or atmosphere with other tools besides reverb, and I really encourage you to try to use delays to add depth here. You can do anything from really short delays, like slap delays, tape slaps. Here's a UAD tape echo machine. Or you could use really complicated sort of ping-pongy delays with something like Fab Filters Timeless or Echo Boy or whatever delay you may happen to use. But try to use some delays subtly blended in, short ones plus long ones, in addition to very light reverb or maybe even no reverb at all. Try not to wash out your vocal or whatever part you're trying to do with reverb. Beginner tip number nine, use reference tracks and compare often. They're mastered, so you do have to turn it down and you kind of have to take loudest with a grain of salt unless you have a tool that automatically does that for you. But you want to compare your mix to commercially released mixes often. Also be very picky about what you use for your reference material. Even a lot of commercial tracks may not be the greatest masters or mixes. So take what you consider are the best mixes in whatever style you're in. And I encourage you to use a tool. This is the uh, Metric AB plugin that allows you to jump back and forth between your mix and the reference mix match volume, all that stuff really easily. There's even also other tools like uh, Loopback, which allows you to bring in streaming services into your DAW and compare your mix versus uh, streaming reference material that way. But whatever you do, even if it's pulling in the WAV file into your session, reference and reference often. Check your mix against a commercial mix and you can really learn a lot about the overall sonics of your mix and what you need to improve upon when you compare it to professionally recorded and produced mixes. Top mixing tip for beginner number 10, the last one we'll talk about today, 
is to use automation whenever traditional tools like EQ and compression still don't get the job done for you, or just to level things out or spice things up between sections. So if you've added EQ and compression onto a channel and whatever other effects you might be using, and the fader still doesn't seem to be stable for you, meaning you can't set that fader in one spot and feel like you can hear it all the time or be in the right spot in the mix all the time, that's the time to use automation and move that fader around automatically whenever you want to. Automation in a DAW is super simple. You can get a controller and write it in. I have a controller, so if I choose a channel, I can just move it up and down and write it that way. Or you can just write it with your mouse. And in that sense, we could just take a track like this kick punch track. I highlight whatever section I want to work on. And if I want to boost it up a little bit, I boost it up a little bit. A great thing to do is to boost up some things, especially parallel processing during choruses, and then bring it back down during verse parts. You can even ride your stereo mix bus, your fader for the master channel, bring it up a half a dB or a dB in the choruses to add that little extra volume push. You can automate your effects. You can automate every channel. It's really a secret weapon built within every DAW to allow your mix to really breathe and flow. So use that whenever you can't get the results you want with those traditional tools. So there we have it, a top 10 list of mixing tips for beginners, things I wish I knew right away when I was learning to mix that'll help you get a definite, more defined and solid mix, help you save some time when mixing and help get you on the right start to better mixes. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in that comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next and I'll see you in the next one.